Appreciate everyone jumping on. I am Money Fomel. I'm one of the team traders with Black Box Stocks. I have Charlie with me here today. We're excited to jump on and go through what we look for in actually evaluating and analyzing unusual options activity. Charlie, are you on? Can you do a mic check for me real quick? One second, let me check on some audio. Testing, testing. Testing, testing. Perfect. We're coming in now. Sorry about that, guys. Just testing some audio. Seems like we are good to go. I appreciate everyone for jumping on. So we're just going to jump right in. I am Money for Mel, one of the team traders with Black Box Stocks, uh, specializing in dark activity and options flow, pretty much the money flow, the big institutions. I've got Charlie here with me. He is my personal mentor. Uh, Charlie, how's it going? Good, Mel. Good. Uh... As far as at this point, you're my mentor, so I'm excited to be with you here today. Well, it's exciting to just kind of be able to delve into this information. Um, I don't think that process ever starts, but I also know that people don't know what they don't know. Um, just a little background on myself. I started as a trial with Blackbox um, and was somebody trading options flow, but it had very little guidance on really kind of what to look for. And one of the things that Charlie will tell you all the time is 99% of this is crap. And well, it's true. So we wanna make sure that you guys are coming in with some basic terminology and understanding some checklists and guidelines, what to actually do uh, to evaluate options flow and also how to more importantly, analyze options flow. I believe my mic may have been off. I apologize for that. So let's just keep it rolling. So we're gonna jump right in and Start with some basics. We've got to be able to go over some basic terminology. Um, so go ahead to just jump right in and talk about understanding utilizations of the options market. And that's something that we're finding more recently is that we have a lot of new traders that have come in that have never even traded common shares because there's so much leverage and you get to trade some of the bigger names with some options flow, but not only are they used for directional positioning, meaning that you are bullish on a stock, so you want to go into calls or bearish on a stock and you want to go into puts, but also a huge part of this market is actually writing options. Um, it's a way to be able to collect premium. And especially when you have a high VIX environment, when you have um, high IV, Sometimes what you'll see is more writing than actually directional positioning. So we've kind of got a little bit of a graphic here to kind of break this down and what it would look like if you were looking at calls, ask or above the ask, puts, ask or above the ask, and then bid and below the bid. So keep that as a reference and we'll continue. Um, you've got to have some guidelines. There is so much activity that comes through. You've got to be able to have some kind of checklist, something to help you weed through this information. And so we do have that. We've got an options flow checklist. And ultimately, what are we looking for? Why are we even looking at this information? Institutions run this market and they are going to be coming in with positions um, that size. And that's ultimately what we want to be following. I and mean, think about that. You've got a house like a Tiger, Tiger Global a huge hedge fund. They have people on there that are specifically looking through, digging through financials, getting and meeting with the companies. Um, we don't necessarily have that same opportunity, but we can certainly be able to track and see where they're positioning. And we're ultimately looking for those big whales. Um, we want to make sure that we're following the same strike, same expiration. We're looking for contract price to be increasing, preferably sweet and then ask or above the ask. I'm not really looking for solo blocks because solo blocks are pre-negotiated, but this is an important part of actually understanding. Hey, hey, hey Mel, before we get into that part, can we, 
Um, you check your mic. We're getting a lot of people saying they're they're having a hard time hearing you. Make sure go to webinars using the microphone you think it is now. Sometimes it reverts back to a different microphone. Yep. Thank you that. I apologize. I appreciate you guys mentioning that. This should be better. That's it. Now you're rolling, girl. Okay, we're good. Okay, apologize. Sorry, a few tech issues. So sorry, so sorry. I see it. That's appreciate right. you guys. Appreciate the feedback. All right, so let's just keep going. We're going to um, talk about, you know, in options, there are two order types. Uh, the best way to think about that is going to be a block order, which think of that like a limit. You're sitting there, you want to get filled, but you only want to be filled. You're stubborn. You only want to be filled at this price. Those are trades that are single, larger trades executed at one exchange. Um, they're they're normally pre-negotiated and they could be tied uh, to other types of trades. So advanced strategies. Also think about all that dark pool activity that I post. Sometimes those are tied to shares. Um, maybe they want to kind of unload a little bit of shares, come in with blocks, still have exposure. There's a lot that kind of goes on there, but just the key, a block is pre-negotiated. They're stubborn. They do not want to get filled unless it's at this price. However, sweeps are going to show you more aggression. These are those trades where they say, I want in and I want in now. It shows urgency to get into a trade. That's going to be more like a market order. So really, as we go through and talk about Option slow. I want you to think of yourself and how you enter those orders, right? Coming up at the ask, you see something, you hear news, and you know that in order to get in that trade, like you have to be a little bit more aggressive and maybe market opposed to like, I want to swing trade this, but I want to kind of limit in. So kind of make it relatable. And 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 more than anything, it's important that you actually understand what that looks like as it comes through the tape. So our system is going to make it all nice and pretty, but here's kind of a breakdown. There's a lot more that comes through on the tape in the transaction details. Most of it's noise. We don't need to know all that. We show the most important things, but here it is. This is a block. They wanted a thousand shares. They got filled a thousand shares. It is one line item. It is a limit order, but then you go to a sweep order and a sweep order is showing that aggression. It's showing you that I want to get filled and I want to get filled now. So essentially they say, I want X number of contracts and that will blast out across all of the open markets to be able to get filled. And I want to kind of draw your attention here to where you can see how many line items and look three contracts, this got filled on the MPRL. That's an exchange. That's a that's an options exchange. Look how many it took to get in. This is really what you kind of want to be focused for, especially if you're more momentum, because it's saying I want in and I want in now. And look how many orders it took to actually complete this order. Now, sometimes you will see it come through to where it is only the 45 contracts, 39 contracts. If you're looking at a broker or time and sales, this is how crazy and how busy it looks because ultimately it is still the one buyer. It's just, we prefer to aggregate that information and most of your bigger institutions and houses will do that. However, not everyone does. One of the best features, because there is so much information coming at you so hard, so fast, it just is a lot to keep up with. Blackbox actually color codes the options flow, which I think is one of the best ways to be able to quickly analyze that information. You have to be fast on your feet. You have to be able to make a decisions quickly. You have to be able to trust that you have all the information in front of you, but more importantly, you want to be able to quickly assess if that order is a new order is that an opening order so if you follow me oftentimes i'm posting opening position because what's that telling you maybe there's been no interest in this name and all of a sudden this one stock is starting to see interest and while that options chain is pretty bare there's not a lot of activity now you're starting to see some interest come in and with some size so that yellow in our color coding is going to tell us for that single line item, that open interest has been exceeded in a single trade. Open interest and volumes will be really important as we progress and we'll continue to add a little bit more so that you can understand that better. If it's a purple line item, 
open interest has been exceeded. It's just taken multiple transactions to be able to exceed that. And white is where you really want to have some caution. Open interest has not been exceeded. And why we want to raise that red flag and say, hey, this is white, it means do a little bit more due diligence. You may have an existing physician because we know that there's a large open interest on that strike and expiration you may have to go back and look at a historical and maybe they wrote those and they're buying them back maybe they are closing the position um, it just is telling you just to dig a little bit of deeper a little more caution i personally have really just really found this year that i prefer to stick with the opening positions because it's telling me there's new positioning new interest and i think that's where i've got the better chance of utilizing options flow open interest is so so important i find that there's a little bit um of a misunderstanding and and people maybe don't understand the full importance of how you can really actually continue to track trades i am a money flow trader there are times that i'm not even looking at a chart and if it is the right name that never sees activity and i know that they're coming in with size um, i know that historically we've had success with a name i may just get into a position because i know that this is a name that will move off of options flow with that being said, let's go back and kind of make sure we're understanding open interest. So there's going to be strike, expiration, all of that. And then as you look at your broker, you're going to see volume. And volume's everything that's coming in today. That's the count of the contracts that have hit the tape today versus an open interest, which is reflective of the existing contracts that are already sitting there and resting in the book. And that is important because when you start to see, remember yellow on our system is a very quick, very quick, very quick identifier to say, hey, this is exceeding open interest. Um, there's more contracts coming in without you going to a broker and double checking. It's telling you this is more contracts than what is currently resting in the book. So that shows you um, intent. It usually will let you know that there's an open position, especially if you have repeats. Um, but one of the cool things about the platform and i'm finding this is easily my favorite resource that we have um, is the bbs open interest tracker and this is going to be important because open interest only updates once a day and so i want to go back and repeat this because there's a lot of i get a lot of questions about this whatever contract is traded today is going to be represented right here in your volume in the morning pre-market any contracts that stay in the book will now be represented into open interest and it will be um, either an increase or decrease and why this is important is because as active as the options market has gotten as liquid as it is especially think of those heavy traded names your teslas your apples those are contracts that you will see very heavily traded they're not necessarily all positions. They're coming in into the morning. They're going to jam it up with some contract. They're going to get a move and then they're out by lunch. And how would you know that? Well, first off, we're gonna be able to show you that it's bid side. We can show you when they come in on the ask and when they actually come and actually exit. But ultimately it's going to be that due diligence you do to be able to track the open interest to confirm your position. So really, really important, especially in this environment where we're not trending we're chopping sideways we are seeing where some positions are being open in the morning and for whatever reason they're being closed um, before the end of the day and they're not staying in the book they're not staying in open interest and that is important because it just means that they're not continuing with that position and of course we're all going to be utilizing this information based off of our own personal trading style uh, i am somebody who tends to trade directly off of um options flow um, some people prefer to have this information and trade more technically however you decide to marry it i think it's still an absolute part of uh, being respectful to yourself to your account and doing your due diligence so definitely worth checking open interest with so much information that comes at you and i mean this is hard and fast there is a lot because not only are we covering every bit of um 
optionable stock out there, but you also have ETFs, which makes it a bit overwhelming. Um, adding this in for some of our newer people that have asked me about how I set myself up, um, I have to say organize. You can have more than one tab open on Blackbox, which is a great way to be able to break up this information. Um, I do get a little bit more complex and go rabbit holing into some other stuff, but I think as a basic starting point, um, set up at least two tabs. Go to your filter, which will be right under the options flow, add security type stock. This is going to give you just all of your equity names and then set up a separate one that has ETFs. Um, by default, I believe you're set up for ask and above the ask. I would really suggest that you unclick that. You want to really be able to see all the information. If we were in a different environment, I would suggest maybe just going ask and above the ask. But because we've had so many recent spikes in the VIX, we have an elevated VIX, you tend to see more buying. And we'll go through some examples. You want to know if it's clean. And that means if you're seeing a line, was there already activity that came in that may lead you to believe that they were possibly riding and now coming and buying it back? Or did they open it this morning and now they're coming in and closing? And in order to do that, you really need to make sure you have all those filters open. Um, kind of a bonus screener. Uh, you know, I, I am a trader. I like to be able to trade momentum. Um, I do keep a separate tab that's going to include um, stock and ETF. And I'm going to just only have yellow selected. Why yellow? Because yellow means that that line has exceeded open interest. That's a new position that shows a lot more aggression. They're not adding to something. They're coming in and they just want in right now. I'm going to set a premium value to at least 50,000. I'm not really trying to mess with the stuff that's being pumped and dumped. I really want to know that there's at least a little bit of money behind this and i'm choosing weekly so think about that like think about that as far as being a wednesday and you have a new position coming in that expires in two days three days that's the kind of stuff that you tend to have some of those quicker momentum moves they're great for those that scalp um, are only looking for that shorter day to day trade um, and you tend to see those kind of continue and at least have a little bit more of that quick momentum opposed to somebody who's buying leaps so important to know yourself and yourself as a trader what you're looking for there's definitely different ways um, you can work through screeners and i'm more than willing to help with that to make sure we're finding something that is a great setup for you this is a big one for me and i'm gonna have to just okay we talked about a lot of information that comes through and i don't care if you use our scanner somebody else's scanner you have to have some kind of way of of taking every inf bit of this information and and bring it in we got to bring it in a little bit because we got to be able to analyze there's just too much data and so here's an example of what the normal feed will look like and this is what i see people do they're going like oh microsoft a million dollars oh microsoft seven hundred twenty-five thousand. Ooh, this Ooh, that and they are just looking at a single line item and i want to kind of give you an idea of what that looks like when you actually Bring this in to where you're isolating the flow. Let's bring it in a little bit, calm down. Now we can actually see exactly what they're trying to do in this strike and expiration. And this is one that if you did isolate it, you'd actually find that they're writing this position and it's actually bullish. Because we do have all of the information, and what do I mean by that? Um, we want to be able to provide all of the data so that you can make informed decisions based off of that because positions open and they close and if they are closing a position it does still come through the cboe their contracts they have to be able to show on the tape that is just as important as watching an opening position because if you follow them in you certainly want to know when they're exiting right um having more information allows us to analyze and i would love to tell you that uh, the tape is black and white, mm, but that's BS and it's not, okay? So if you have one line of flow, you can only evaluate that based off of how that come in. And I'm talking about how it will fall on the bid ask spread. And I want you to think about how we are trading in an algorithmic world, how quickly like this, that tape changes. So out of nowhere, you're a bio, 
that never sees you got like you know a total for a whole year you've got a total of 224 contracts on your whole chain and all of a sudden somebody comes and pops it with some calls guess what what happens because you've been there we've done that we've chased news trades we've chased different stuff that spread automatically starts to widen out and as a function of that, as orders start to come in, you will see stuff that will get caught on the bid ask. I mean, caught as in it will just register as bid because it's just moving so fast or ask. And what I really do pride myself on and something that Charlie's helped me with and has taught and has taught uh, the group at Black Box is we, we want to be able to analyze that. And that's really where we get to into actually understanding what they're trying to do with the tape. And that's really what we wanted to bring everybody in here for today was to kind of make sure that there was awareness. I see people that just attach um, just to it. Well, that was asked, that was bid. You're not flipping, you're not coming in, laying some wood, putting $1.5 million in a contract and 20 seconds later, you're on the bid. You, we've got to make sure that like, you understand some of the other dynamics that are behind when you're actually reading the tape. Our tape is not different than anybody else's. How it comes across is how it's going to come across, whether you're using us, think or swim, any kind of tape. You have to be able to analyze because um, we want to make sure that some of that stuff is not missed because if you are following contracts that you think are puts, but they're actually being written, you are at an absolute automatic uh, disadvantage. And we're gonna get into some great examples. That's when Charlie's gonna jump on with me, but I did wanna make sure for anybody that's new, we do have a lot of resources, um, education, class calendar we want to make sure that you guys are hitting these up it's important that you're uh, up to date on the terminology where to find the information uh when it is the trading day that's the last time you want to be fumbling the ball right it's go time you got to make sure that you're prepared and also we are on voice all through the trading day i think this is where there is the biggest benefit because we're doing all of this real time and, and i know this is going to look like we're cherry picking stuff but this is actually all the stuff that we're talking about on voice. If you've seen my post or Charlie's post, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're really going in and, and having some great conversation dialect and, and try to take a lot of pieces of the puzzle together. Because while this is more focused on options flow, and that is what we're delving into to be able to kind of give some tips and tricks on how to analyze, um, we're, we're, we're a full service. Uh, you know, we have the dark pool data and, and that's something that I, I do really specialize in just sitting in front of this tape for so long, uh, remembering some of those names or also where you start to see themes, right? Um, if all of a sudden out of nowhere, you start seeing some financial size, um, you may have some sector rotation and that is an amazing way to be able to take that information and bump it up with the options flow and that stuff that we are discussing on voice. So, Charlie? Yes, ma'am. Let's, let's analyze the flow. All right, so we're gonna take it back one more time to recap. We're looking for same strike, same expiration. We prefer sweeps or sweeps and blocks because remember, blocks are like a limit order pre-negotiated. We're looking for those sweeps, aggression. Um, we were looking for contract price increasing. And as a double check, we could also look at IV. And most people don't know this and I don't think most places have that. Um, and we're always looking at those timestamps. That's gonna be something that's important. And going to, again, reference the checklist here so that you have that. Hopefully you'll have taken a screenshot that will definitely help you with some starting points. But let's get into it. Sometimes it's this easy, Charlie. Sometimes it is. Um, these are really good examples here too. And, and especially with the contracts and I be all meshing like the the Bob up there calls and puts at the ask. So sometimes it's it is just that easy. They came in at two dollars and twenty seven cents, two dollars and thirty five cents, two fifty, two fifty three. Now and the spot price the spot price stayed within like seventeen cents here, but your contract price jumped up twenty six cents. So your contract price is going up faster than your spot. IP is cranking up. That's pristine flow that's what you want to see we don't always get it that easy so you have to go in and start you know checking the tire pressure and looking at it a little deeper and this and that and smelling the back seat so uh those are pristine those are really good flr same thing puts you, you've got it right there dollar 10 dollar 13 dollar 20 ivy 49 50 51 so ivy is a little bit 
double confirmation for us. And me and Mel are to the point in trading flow that even if you didn't have the ask or bid over there, once that first line came through, we can go immediately and say, oh, we know what they're doing with those contracts. Forget the bid ask for a minute, you know, as far as me and Mel are concerned. And that's the point we'd like to get the whole world into or up to rather. And so like this is a little bit more uh, these are good. These are clean. And I think he was about to show a, a little yeah. mixed one there. Clean, clean and easy. And we wish that all of it did come through, but we know that it doesn't because we've sat and analyzed tape for how many hours a day, how many days of the week. Uh, it, it isn't. And so you have to be able to add some other checkpoints in. Um, you know, you've got to be able to, one line of flow, you can only go off of that information. Once you have multiple lines of flow, we know that we're gonna see stuff that's mixed. That's not necessarily gonna be as clean. We wish it was, but we also know what to look for. We're isolating the flow. And I do just wanna side note, in our screenshots, we are always starting at the bottom because that's going to give us that first line and that's always our reference. We are never starting top down. Absolutely not. Timestamps are important. How did they first come in and then how did everything roll in after? So a really good one, Charlie. I, you actually took this trade. You wanna walk through this one? Yeah, so this was one where they uh, came in, you know, above the ask real quick and six seconds later, like, which is, is nothing in our world. Uh, the next one came through just a little bit higher, but on the bid side, but IB did go up and you already got people going, oh no, they're selling, they're selling. Look, they didn't buy 774,000, then decide to sell 19,000 of it or somebody else, you know, we always get asked, well, how do you know this is the same trader? Well. I can't prove it's the same trader, but I can tell you all of this happened within a minute and 19 seconds. So the odds of, especially if it was a little shorter in time frame, that first two lines there, 9-12-21 and 9-12-27, two people at the exact same time in, in history didn't decide, you know what, let's go let's go buy some run puts for 324 uh, to, within seconds of each other. Didn't happen. So we know that bid side right there is another, is another you know, somebody coming in. Uh, then you got your next one. Now, here, this is back to the ask side, then back bid side and back back ask side. So, but IV kept, well, actually, IV dropped on that one. Uh, Mella should have been looking at that a little closer. But again, the whole thing when we get to looking at it, 67 to 73, with spot price staying basically the same. Um, so we did, I took, I think I took shares on this one, if I remember right, uh, had a, kind of a heavy position on this a couple of times lately, but at, above the ask, bid, ask, bid, ask, and that can get confusing. But if you're looking at how it's going up and you're looking at the IV, then it starts to clear up for you. Yeah, and so that's just kind of one of those things you want to draw your attention. And this is just a perfect example of, you know, it, we wish it was just that clean to where it came into the tape, but I want you to look at, you know, and understand that IV is a function of pricing. And once you hit with this kind of size, and this was shorter dated when they came in, I think this was maybe what a two week, no, a one same week. Um, that's that's going to have an impact on price. And and so much of this is algorithmic. So no, they didn't close this because it just, it jumped. And that's a function of that spread widening out and this getting caught when it filled um, on the tape. And that that's probably one of the biggest things that um, unfortunately most people don't realize because they just really want it to be like, okay, it's ask, it's bid, it's just this, it's just as simple. And and we really want to get everybody to where they're actually looking just a little bit closer. Um, and that timestamp, that's definitely the same. The timestamps time are key here and, it, and, and spot prices. And that's the thing that, that not a lot of people analyzes that spot price and I wish they did because if you take that bottom line where we started and the price is 1780 and then you go to that third one even though that's a little bit under where that second line came in the spot price is still the same it's higher than where it started while it might be a little lower than that second one there it's higher than where it start, started and the IV is still higher than where it started but the spot price hasn't moved this tells us their intent contract prices don't go up IV doesn't go up if it's not pop, 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 and they're, you know, everything's in sync. That tells us right there, even without a bid or an ask, we can tell by this flow and the pricing, and then it goes to 1781. So it's moved up one penny, but these contracts are now up, now up 
from the very start there, 5%. And by the time they, you know, you get to that top line, they're up 10% from where that originally started. And spot price now is starting to go down. You know, run is starting to drop here a little bit. But in the beginning, where it's staying stable and the contract price is going up, that's really clean. Even though it doesn't look that clean to you, that's the flow we're looking for. That's when we're starting, it's starting to get our attention and say, okay, this spot price isn't moving, but that contract is juicing. That starts to get our attention. Absolutely. Um, and I think the next one is going to be going into option writing. And, and I know this is one of the, the most difficult because I know it took me a while to, to, to really understand it. So I needed that repetition constantly. And I think that's what we always try to do. Um, but this is a huge part of the options market. And that's one of the things we were touching on before to where most people don't realize that they think it's only going to be directional. You have to. Now, let me be very clear. Charlie writes and he does a lot of writing. I personally don't. And I still need to know this information, at least from understanding terminology, what this trade is meant to represent is going to be very important. It doesn't mean that I have to follow and curtail that that trade exactly as it, as it came in. I could see uh, bullish put writing and I could just decide to get calls. Um, to where Charlie may find it an advantage because he does write to where he wants to write along with that player. So there's different ways to utilize the information, but most important, you do actually have to know what, when you see this information, what it actually means. Um, so we kind of call it like bullish puts, right? So like writing, um, and it's going to be yellow puts at the bid. That means the order exceeds open interest at the bid. And this is super important. This is this is one of the, the harder things that took me so long to get. You cannot close what is not there, meaning you cannot close a position if it's not already, if you do not already have contracts and open interest. And so it's a sell to open order. The investor is writing the puts to collect the premium. And when you have multiple lines of that coming through, you're going to see the opposite of what we would look for for directional calls or puts. You're going to start to see the contract price decreasing and your IV decreasing. And I'm going to kind of run with this one because uh, this tripped up a lot of people. It is mixed flow, um, meaning you have bid, ask, bid, ask, bid, ask. But once you isolate this and you are showing the actual position, um, let's kind of start here at the bottom. Uh, again, always starting at the bottom. They originally came in bid side. Uh, the next line was an ask. Um, we're still staying the same with pricing here until we start to drop. And then we're very mixed as far as bid ask, bid ask, but I'm not focused on the bid and the ask. I'm focused on this contract pricing. I want you to see how many line items are here. If they were aggressively getting into puts, this contract price would be juicing. I know you guys have seen that before. If you watched options flow, you get something that is a shorter dated position. And as soon as they start to come in, you get that IV, that juices, that contract price juicing. You see them come in for a dollar, then you pull it up and you're trying to get in and you're fighting a spread that's you know a dollar twenty by a dollar thirty um, because it will just move that quickly. Now, this is where it's important because if you at least at the minimum had a checklist to be able to follow, uh, this would not be something. So even if you were not able to see all of the activity as it came in, to be able to see that this is also mixed with bid because some places don't show you the bid side activity, um, <clears throat> it would still be a no touch and a red flag because even if you just looked at the ask and then what came between the spread this contract price is not going in so if there's anything that is a takeaway if you were going to follow flow that contract price needs to at least be increasing if it is not increasing and you have a lot of interest and a lot of volume and activity something is wrong it's a red flag but this is something we would talk to members about because uh the way they came in you constantly had this decrease and then you also had this iv decreasing unfortunately i did catch a few people trying to you know say this was a ton of volume which there was because there was two pages of this on this one um, and they were actually writing those contracts and it it kind of brings us to another thing charlie that you always say uh which is is to kind of a retail trap right um contract is a contract is a contract so whether you 
came in and you bought this and it's directionally positioned for you to play or it is written that will show in oi and unfortunately what's the biggest what's your biggest pet peeve charlie high oi is not a reason to buy and exactly while we say that and and somebody had asked a question a minute ago what is writing so the uh and a lot of times emails right i i would almost prefer to write uh calls or puts than than buy than buy a call or put so if i if we see somebody come in on on say microsoft and we may i don't even know if we have the slide or not but a couple of weeks ago they wrote those puts and i think it was uh 265 255s i can't remember uh so and they came in for several million dollars and people see that the next day and there's oh man these puts increased here look, look at this it's going down to 255 know what that person is actually saying is there's a floor there so and the same thing on the call side if i go write calls and we've wrote them on apple uh a dozen times especially back last december early january we were writing calls with them and we were actually bearish because if if i'm selling you a contract if i'm writing that contract I'm, I'm not wanting you to go make money off of it, go make 500% off of it. I'm wanting that contract to go to zero. I'm collecting premium. Uh, and so we'll do that a lot. Uh, and people do get confused by that high OI, but you have to know what created that OI. Uh, if you don't know what created it, don't follow that trade. Don't just wake up and say, oh shit, look at this. It just jumped 7,000 contracts overnight. So I'm, damn, I'm, I'm buying this call. No, 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 no. If you don't know what created it, don't touch it. Don't and and touch oftentimes, it. oftentimes you'll see the writing and out of money positions. And I, I we see that too often to where um, that makes perfect sense. You know, like while there's a news story or something that happened, while there is that increase in IV, why don't I take advantage of that as an options writer and write some contracts? Um, so very important. Don't just follow a high OI. Make sure you understand how those contracts came in. Um, and of course... Well, and, and I want to say one more thing about that too. A lot of times they'll write, and I'm guilty of it too, write something that you just find so far fetched because there's no, if there's no ER this week, so you know, it, XYZ say Apple's trading at at 160, and you start going to write in a bunch of 135s, 140s or something, something that's just not going to happen. I mean, it could, but it's it's very rare. We'll go write a bunch of those, and I'm not usually that far out of the money, but. I may be 10 points out of the money on Apple or Microsoft. On Microsoft, I may be a little bit more, but uh, we'll go write those, you know, and a lot of people do it, and it does increase that OI. But nobody's, we're not expecting it to go down there. We're certainly hoping it doesn't go down there because we're writing next, those contracts. Now, in writing, I can go cover it at any time, but still, that our intent is to just collect premium and, and watch that contract go down to zero. That's our intent when we write those. Yeah, and and absolutely. I, I think the biggest takeaway is that you have to at least understand that that's a whole nother function um, of the options market, because I think that's something that unfortunately is missed. And so you have to at least know that there is that that opportunity for others to be able to profit differently than you would if you were just going directionally, um, because you know just like. Uh, bullish puts there's bearish calls and we're kind of like you know label it that way so that you kind of have an idea and it really does make it difficult <laughs> to process because wait what uh calls bearish yes so it's again we're going to be looking at those um yellow line items the calls that are at the bid because open interest is exceeded with that line item but it's coming in at the bid and you can we get this often well they could be closing a position not if open interest is exceeded because you cannot close what is not there that takes a little bit to kind of like sit with but we'll continue to say it and i think that's how you learn best through repetition um, again we're going to be looking for the same thing contract price decreasing iv decreasing and we did have a um recent example come in on knx and this one isn't this one's pretty clean i mean you've got it on the bid they're starting at 230 but you do you see this decrease then we go to 225 220 on the ask, 220 on the ask. But I can see over here that this was a transaction that all came in within 30 seconds. This is the same buyer. You don't have somebody in a house in New York that's coming in on the 29th second of the 
47th minute and then somebody else also active here and there was some pretty decent size but this is a good example of the spot price too so if the if the bid bid ask ask is bothering you this goes back to the spot price the spot price is the same it's within one penny it went up a penny it went down a penny from the very first line but that contract is continuing to go down now if this is straight buying i can tell you the contract isn't going to go from 230 to 220 that's just not going to happen so we know right there, 230, 225, 220, 220, when the spot price is the same. Again, forget the bid ask for a minute. I'm not even looking at it at that point. I'm going, okay, spot price is doing this, contract price is going down, and the IV is dropping. Somebody is selling these contracts. <clears throat> yep. So and definitely that spot to... price tells that story. That spot price, everything starts with a spot price. And I wish I could get the whole world to understand that. If the spot price is staying the same, but the contract is moving in a certain direction, that's the direction of, of the intended trade. Forget the bid ask. That's every system uses it. We use it. But if I, you know, if I could take one thing away from the world, it would be the bid ask and just go with the direction, the spot price, IV, and you will learn so much more about flow. If that spot price had dropped from 5509 to say 50. 54.90 and the contract price went down. Well, of course it went down. Why did it go down? Because well, the spot price is dropping anyway, so calls are going to get cheaper. But if that spot price is staying the same or within a certain range, and you're getting that that fluctuating fluctu fluctuation in the contract price, you know the intent without looking at the bidder ask. Sorry, Mel, go ahead. No, I mean, I, I just think this is really, really important because I think just th that it's just not even something that's discussed enough um, and there's enough awareness about and, and really like I, I'll tell you, um, I'm we're kind of a, going to be a little selfish here because um, I'm sick of options flow getting a bad rep because people aren't following the right flow. So I'm just kind of trying to throw out a Hail Mary here because it, it is, is some really good information, but most of it is crap and we're sick of people following crap and seeing it and just going, oh, it's options flow, this should work, and then getting discouraged. Um, we'd rather you kind of like take a step back and find ways to be able to utilize it, at least put a few rules in place and a better understanding um, of kind of what you will see coming through. Um, and just like they come into flow, you can actually see when they exit, and this is important, especially if you are more of a straight flow trader. Um, if you saw them come in, you definitely want to know when they're exiting. Um, so they can roll positions. And this first example, uh, this came in on 214, so kind of an older one, uh, but they closed out of CRM, the 217. Now remember white means that open interest hasn't been exceeded. So I kind of want you to look at this size here. Um, that is a red flag for me all day, every day. It means that I need to go back and kind of see what that positional count looks like. Um, and then when I, isolate this flow, I'm able to see that every time they've come in, even if it's on the ask, it's going backwards, except that last one right there. Um, <clears throat> so it just leads me to believe that they're actually probably closing an existing position. And of course, I can see that IV is decreasing as these roll in. If there was really intent and interest to stay in this position, that contract price would be going up, that IV would be going up. Um, unfortunately, was not able to get this to capture the timestamps, uh, but this is an example of a roll because on that same day, they did go ahead and take the profit on the 170s. They still like the name. They're still interested. They rolled up and out, meaning they went and grabbed an extra week and went with a higher strike. So that is something that isn't uncommon. There's still interest here. They want to take some profits like we all should if we kind of want to stick with a name and they came and rolled it in coming in above the ask into another position so this is an example of a roll um, and you'll also see that in some of your spreads we have that listed under ml that's a multi-leg it's more of an advanced option strategy but a great example on pins that they actually came in pretty hefty charlie you want to go over this one so this was a nice one, and a few people did follow this. So they they went ahead and exited their March March position, and I think this was either on OPEX day or the day before uh, a couple of weeks ago, and doubled up. And Pinterest yesterday did hit I think 29 and change, but yeah, they just straight doubled up on that contract. Uh, it just went out further in time, so they did take profits on the um, the ones they were in. 
and you can see their exit and immediately, immediately, same time stamp and everything, they just immediately went and bought the other ones. For so June. Still yeah, still interest in the name and they actually wanted to add to that position. So um, that's kind of an example of rolling. Uh, just once you kind of have um, an institution sticking with a name, you'll tend to see that maybe month over month, quarter over quarter. It's not unusual. We definitely want to make sure you guys know what that looks like on the tape. Um, so just because you're seeing a position close, really what you'd want to be doing is looking for a roll because they're going to take profits along the way. You want to see if there's continued interest. Um, sometimes there's just like, different information you can take away um, from positioning. I'm somebody like I love to track ETFs because I think that really adds an edge into where you have sector rotation or an early heads up. Um, this XBI player that came in on 2.9 hit with some size and uh, they came into 616, 78 puts and you had a block here with 2.6 million. Um, and XBI was one that I was even personally in, cut that position after seeing that uh, and went back and started to look at seasonality and like March is the absolute worst seasonality um, historically over 10 years for XBI. So it makes sense to see this trade. But what's really also where you can have information and gleam information from what you're seeing is not always just like, okay, I'm only trading XBI, but what it can offer into, you know, like I said, sector rotation. And so here we have this large position and that's what I'm looking at because now we start to go into a seasonally um, stronger period where you start to see an increase as we go into April, May and June, uh, June being the strongest for XBI and they are closing this position and they did profit. That's a nice double here. But because they exited, this is now giving me more information. So perfect timing as we're kind of winding down from March and we start to kind of shift over. Uh, a little nibbling here in leaps, but I will tell you between uh, the dark pool activity that we have coming in with uh, bio names, as well as some of the individual flow we're seeing, you definitely do have a presence uh, starting to step up. I will tell you, I'm, I'm not very good at bio. I tend to pick the ones that will kill people. Um, so XBI is very liquid. Uh, it's probably gonna be more of what I would prefer to stick to. Um, so we'll be looking to kind of set up a position there, but I think, even this with this kind of size that you don't see this and so i know not everybody watches etfs but xbi is not one that sees this kind of size with multi-million um, there's a lot that you can take away and that's kind of a lot of what we're looking and constantly talking about on voice to be able to put those puzzle pieces together and and how even though this is a close it's just as important because now this is maybe where you'll start to kind of base create a bottom, create a floor, and you may start to see XBI turn around. And I think we're hey. certainly seeing that with individual names. So Mel, like one of the one of the questions a, a few people had typed, this one was a block and we have talked about no solo blocks. Now I'm gonna I agree with that no solo block theory. I know Mel does and most of the options traders do. It's usually a big block is going to be pre-negotiated. When this trade actually came through, we were long XBI. Mm -hmm. um, and so this this kind of did catch us off guard of like, wait a minute, even though it's a big block and we typically ignore them, uh, it did cause us to cut some positions uh, on XBI. I actually took a loss on XBI. And this, yeah. so yeah. I don't want to ever say totally ignore them. I don't necessarily take that trade or trade off of it, but I, I can't always ignore $2.6 million. And I may not follow that because, you know, a lot of times blocks are hedges or whatever. In this situation, it was just a straight murder in XBI. Uh, yeah, so so it's it's also about look. Sometimes it's not always what you see; it's what you don't see. Or when you have enough pulse on what comes in, and when you've sat with the tape long enough, you know that XBI doesn't see stuff. So when you see something after not seeing something, whether it be a sweep or a block, because it's an ETF, I'm paying attention because what you may see sometimes is positioning in the ETFs before you ever see it in the individual names. It's the names. And that's yeah. where we were able to, to so, you know, um, not shown, but worth noting, and I was like, like, Jesus, don't go oil long because of the size that they were positioning in June. And I said, this is a really difficult trade to kind of be able to digest because they hit OIH, 
they hit XLP and they hit XLE all out to June with like millions of dollars. Never once came into the individual names. Does the ETF move or is it because of the names in the ETF? It is the names. So this was a first clue, a first heads up of, hey, there is bearish, very, very, very large bearish positioning here. And and I remember saying, it's not going to make its move. The, the charts look good. I mean, this was coming in end of January, beginning of February. Those charts still held relative strength. And you weren't going to see the move until they actually started to get aggressive into the individual names. And that's exactly what happened. And they did end up closing. You did have a, a pretty big decrease but um that's kind of a lot of what we're doing and discussing on voice like what it's not going to happen right away <laughs> it's not at all i've been doing this for almost five years with the team um this is kind of like the what i i, I do love etfs i'm probably the strongest i know charlie's starting to look at it a little bit more and he wouldn't really look at it but we're really starting to see where there's just like a lot of insight into some of these sector etfs and where there's some um, opportunities but maybe it's not the etf that you want to trade at least you know where the positioning is and where you have larger size positioning it means like when you start to see um, the individual names come through, you already have that awareness. You already know uh, from a sector perspective that there's either, you know, bullish or bearish positioning and you're kind of working around that. And that's kind of what I just really enjoy doing as far as um, taking puzzle pieces, starting with the corners and working our way in. All right. It gets even more complicated because <laughs> sometimes they don't, they want to come in with size and it's like an okie doke um we want this position and then like for whatever reason they change their mind which is a little baffling because it is unusual to see that um this was an example on friday um i do just have the date shown because i had to go back and kind of pull a historical they came in and it looked great i mean you got financials so we were starting to see several names um all get lit not only from individual names but also the sectors and the leveraged funds uh they did come in with some really nice size positioning opening that's yellow uh positioning contract price increasing uh <clears throat> with some size and then in the afternoon we did start to see what was kind of mixed um bid ask bid you don't have a lot of variation with price here uh, you do have like a little bit of a drop um, in iv but kind of one of the things that we like to look for is contract count okay so like we're looking at what they originally came in for could this be an exit and and essentially what we're looking for is okay did they come in and in this instance they came in with about a little over 1500 contracts and they were out with just a little over 1500 contracts now this isn't something we would know until we ultimately got to check open interest on Monday, of course, because that's not going to update until the next day. And what are we looking for if we're looking at open interest? We're looking to see if the contract stayed and we should be able to see and add up all these contracts and it should have increased Monday. That's the hard part. You have to be able to make decisions. You have to be able to trust the information that you have, be able to look at that information. And sometimes it's not always clear. But if I was in this position and I saw that there were 1,500 contracts in, and now I'm seeing um, collectively 1,500 contracts that are going bid, I may look to be cutting that position because they could have exited. And it's a Quick decision based off of the information that you have. Of course, confirmation is going to come Monday when we can actually check OI. And I could have been dead wrong and we increased, you know, 3,000 in contracts. But it's that very quick. You've got to understand that sometimes they're in, sometimes they're out. But I'm thankful I to mean, they, know. they trade too. You know, they, they, yeah. they scout too. Absolutely. So, and they take losses the same day. In this, in this yeah. example right here, this trader took. 30 cent, you know, per contract on 1500, so they 45 grand probably. Um, and it happens, you know, they change their mind like we do, or maybe their intention was, you know, hoping to sell it at seven that day. We will never know, but we do know that they yeah. did, did go ahead and exit that trade for sure. Yeah, and if you recall, this was the original slide I had when we discussed open interest and um, they did not stay in the book. They closed all those contracts. You only had an increase that was about 600. And, and 
what the volume was um, would have meant that these contracts, you had about the 3,100 that actually closed. So they didn't say. Um, but it's at least I get to see that and I get to make that decision. I get to know if they're coming in that I I, I can find solace in the fact that like if they're exiting, I'm going to see that as well and be able to kind of assess from there. And, and maybe I get the original idea from Flow and I'm going to trade the rest of it technically. That's OK. Um, but you at least want to know where you have that positioning. Um, and like Charlie said, these people trade, too. And, and important to mention that because of the additional leverage you get. Uh, when we talk about um, extremely liquid names and, and how much of a beast they are to be able to go through all the information, it's difficult. So when you look at SPY and Qs and Tesla and Apple, um, those are so heavily traded. They're in weeklies. They're in for an hour, they're out. They're, you know, It just is so much. So keep that in mind. Um, you want to be looking for those opening positions. You want to be looking for something extra a little special and <clears throat> sometimes you are able to find where you really do have and it really does take something like this something like really unusual really big um, we were able to catch a uh, multi-leg spread in meta um, this was a uh, risk reversal that was capped um, I know Charlie, you were you were loving this one, so I'm going to let you take this one and go through it. Yeah. So basically, on this trade right here, you know, and Meta was trading at uh, when this came in, $182, and the trader sold the 165 puts, collecting $16.60. And right there, they're saying, okay, you know, they're putting where they're comfortable, but they bought the 185 costs. They bought just right at the money that. The puts they sold were in the money, and then the uh, 240s. That's where it. That's where they capped it out at. But anyway, they collected the 1.93 and the 2.9, the five million there, and they're betting on it not going over 240. Or if it does, you know, they'll be capped there either way. And they may have already took some of those off, but that trade, as soon as that came through, like we were all just like, okay, on the meta fan club. And you could just see it just, and the next day, literally it did just gap up and it just didn't look back from that point. Yeah, and so we want to be able to bring this up because not only do we have um, to where you can filter that out. If you are newer, this is not where you want to start. It's going to take a little bit more of an understanding. You really, really have to understand, bid, ask, how that stuff comes through. But for those that do trade spreads or maybe only trade multi-legs and want spread information, we do have now, a new filter. One second, because I misspoke because you know how I get nervous. The 165s are actually out of the money. So they were right out of the money puts at the money calls and then they kept it you know, out of the money calls there too. So I, I misspoke there when I said in the money puts, but it's out of the money, uh, the out of the money puts on the 165s. So, and, and Meta has not turned back since that point, but I did want to clar clarify that because I did miss misspeak. Good, good, good. I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did for sure. Um, we do have a new filter to where you can actually run another tab or if that's your style and, the, and you do like the spreads. Um, that this is new where you can run only multi-leg. So it allows you to kind of catch some of these bigger trades. I know some people just like to focus on some of that that has that larger size that is um, the multi-legs. Um, and it it's stuff like this. I mean, even Meta, I would say, coming off the bottom had to have been one of the first names. It, it, surprisingly enough, uh, Meta and uh, Microsoft were just kind of relentless. They they just they had no chill there as far as just like positioning with some time, with some size. Um, and one of the things we kept looking at and thinking was where's Apple out of favor? Is she the darling? We kind of have something that we've picked up on throughout the years. Um, you know, watching the flow and like I said, Meta is extremely heavily traded. It really has to be something super extraordinary, out of the ordinary, for us to really even mention flow in Apple. And we actually do have that. And 
Charlie's going to walk through an example that originally came back in 1219. I kind of have this marked up, but they're writing. They're not even directional. So this is where it's really important that you do understand that not everything that you see that could have an impact on a stock that you trade is directional. It could also just be writing. Yeah, and, and there was a whole lot of that back in December. And uh, they were writing those calls. Uh, if we're starting with that one on the top there, they were writing those 140s and uh, below the bid, 11.95 million. <clears throat> now you might say, well, in March, it was well above 140. That thing went down to 122, I think it was. We still used it as a direction. And Apple did keep dropping. The more they were writing those calls, they were buying puts. And it was, I think, January 6th, Mel, January 7th. Where January, we finally... 5th. January 5th, right here. Yep, this one right here. Nailed it. Yep, nailed it. And that's when we said, we hope the Apple bottoms in. I mean, obviously, we never know. And I don't, I'm never going to go out and make that call and just say, oh, the bottom's in. I'm not that guy. But it's on my Twitter, so I haven't ever deleted it, that we hoped, finally, I think it said, finally. Yeah. So, you know, some, uh, they were writing puts and, you know, starting to buy calls again. So we do like to look at Apple and it's, it's usually above 10 million where we really take it serious. I haven't tracked the two to 5 millions as much, but we have tracked the 10 million and above on Apple and they get the direction right. I'd say 95% of the time. Yep. Yep. Seeing that is, is definitely what you, um, and, and let's, be honest, when you have this kind of drop, um, you may not see institutions step up and put money to work directionally call side. This is a lot of what we see. Most people don't realize that. Um, some institutions are, are regulated and, and uh, they can't uh, go in if a VIX is a certain number. I mean, every house is gonna be a little different. Most people don't realize that. And so so it doesn't mean that they're not actively trading and, and profiting off of that. You just need to know what to look for. And certainly, um, like we mentioned, you know, just a few weeks ago, where's Apple? You know, we've had Meta, we've had Facebook, we've had Pandw, we've had some software names, we've had a few things. Are we just like going to completely abandon our darling? I mean, what's going on? And I know that this is something that you've been watching for, because if you look at and, and can we say it, this is the same guy? No, but when you start to kind of bring in pattern recognition and you kind of are looking for different things and you'll see that the more you sit in front of the tape, uh, yeah, we're looking for this big guy. Where's this big guy? And it's usually at least above 10 million. Now this one was split. Um, so if you added all that up, you're right about that 10 million, but they did actually come in on 316. What you got there, Charlie? So, and I, I can't hardly blow this because it's not on my screen, but they they wrote the 160 puts uh, out for 616. So they are collecting uh, 15 million uh, in premium here if the trade works out for them. And they do have another ER coming up next month. So, but it was was something we were looking for, and the market is kind of flatlined in there since this trade came through a couple of weeks ago. We have just very tight range, so. Uh, that is one we're definitely watching for sure. Yeah. But foot uh, riding is, is something that I love to catch. And I know that, uh, you know, we have a lot of them out there, Alex Jones now, and a lot of them that are that are starting to really get into those trades more. Because there's a lot of information here. I mean, um, I know uh, Apple, I won't keep on and watch daily. I will spot check it. But um, it's a lot of BS. To, to, to be honest, it's all weekly stuff that's one at the money, right in the money, one out of the money, and it's just traded. So that's really important if you see people going like, oh, it's like just crazy bullish flow in Apple. More, more than likely, it's, it's just something is not the thing. And so we really kind of want to draw attention. It seems like, especially in Apple, what you're going to see more of is, is what most people aren't looking at. And that's something that we definitely do. Um, so that's kind of going to wrap it up for us. Uh, we do appreciate the time, and I think it's important just to kind of at least introduce some of these ideas, the terminology. If you're new to anything, Investopedia, you reach out to me and Charlie. We're very active on Twitter. Um, but it, it's just important that you at least are starting to add a little more um, 
checklists, rules, awareness. You, you've got to be able to stay because this wasn't the market that it was two years ago. It wasn't the market that it was a year ago. Things are constantly changing. And those are things that we're picking up as we're watching some of the options flow come in. Um, and we're also on voice all during the day. So uh, just kind of like we're having these discussions, we're kind of geeking out on this all through the trading day. So as this stuff is coming in, we're answering questions and, and here to help and make sure that uh, you get an extra set of eyes. We just don't want you buying something that's like not what the trade that you should be in. And with that being said, we do have a promotion right now. Um, this does expire on Friday, but version 2.0 of black box we've got a lot of new studies and and some stuff that's just really amazing um and also you have a team that's kind of like working with you and talking through this stuff it's it's very difficult especially if you work to get the full pulse of the market you know what's coming in what's an etfs uh the amount of options flow that comes in daily is is overwhelming even for somebody who trades full-time and i'm used to this there's still days that i feel like I've, I've missed something um so a few of the new features we have go no go trend options dollar flow net options delta and this is going to be something that's important especially if you are a spy qqq iwm trader um, we did take it another step further and not only do we include everything that's coming through from an options perspective to be able to register that net options delta but if you're a scalper day trader we now break that out to where you're getting the one day zero day net options delta so you can kind of see how the flows that are coming in and the options flow that are driving that i know that's a huge thing the zero dte is real is really real <laughs> I mean, we see it's a lot true. of this stuff come in yeah um gamma exposure multi-chart layouts and you can also save your chart settings dark pool volume profile there's there's a, a lot that we have to offer so if you are interested you can certainly check out and, and i want to tell them too though mel anybody listening you can find that link to sign up for two dollars on mel's twitter um so if you are going to sign up please go click her twitter and uh throw it uh, out yeah. there Yep, and Swan just sent that out, I think, to everybody in the uh, messages, too. Thank you, Swan. Um, so, yeah, go check out Money Flow Mail there. I'm sure all of y'all are following her anyway, but if you're not, please do. And uh, no, she is I, a rock star. I, guess. I appreciate that. I just think it's it's a challenge, and, and sometimes you don't know what you don't know, and that was certainly me to where I just thought something that came across – and it was weekly was just like oh let's just keep throwing money at it and, I, and you really helped kind of build some framework on what to look at and i didn't know that there was writing i didn't know that that was something to even be aware of and to look at um so i just think it's important to share that with everybody once you kind of um have been able to kind of build a little bit more off of that so i appreciate all that you share with the group and i know everybody else at black box does as well i appreciate you very much all right, we are going to keep it closed off for questions. I appreciate Swan answering them when they can. I do just want to reassure anybody we're not trying to uh, not answer questions. We want to kind of keep this as clean and quick. I, we know that it was a lot of information just in a short time frame. But again, um, just even to learn a few things, and 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 I will tell you that's that's Charlie and I to the core um, with a heart of gold. We'd rather just you know some things, whether you use us and other services, it doesn't matter, like at least get some familiarity if you're using this information, um, because we love this. Like this is our like this is our thing. Uh, we want you to use it correctly and, and at least have awareness on kind of what to look for to kind of give yourself a better chance. She's a thousand percent right there. I don't care what service you use. She doesn't care what service you use. Use it right. Options flow is a very dangerous tool, uh, especially when you're not looking at time stamps, obviously, or you don't have all the information, or maybe the trade isn't aggregated. So you see uh, a sweep that's 200,000 come through in a thousand different lines. And you're like, oh, all these people are buying. No, it's one person, but it wasn't aggregated. And you, you can see that on toss and stuff where it'll, it's not aggregated. So you you really need to, to learn what it is if you're going to use it and what you're going to do with it and and this isn't gonna what we just did isn't going to teach you everything in one one sit down we do have some other videos go check them out uh on youtube mel what's the youtube link that you've got those posted on oh let's see um i'll get it posted i'll post high oi is not a reason to buy i think that's important especially for newer retail traders i'll get that out by twitter okay, okay. But first off, um, thank you for joining. I, I think uh, that really shows your commitment. It's been a hard year for a lot of traders and the fact that you're like willing to put in the work, take the time. And I know you guys are juggling work, kids, 
we all are and appreciate you guys taking the time um this will be recorded i know i i did kind of talk really fast there's just so much information um and i kind of go over the top so this will be recorded so that you can reference back to but again just really want to thank you guys for stepping up and actually committing you know an hour of your life an hour and 10 minutes to your life uh, to join us today that really means a lot so you guys have a good rest of your day and reach out if you have any questions thanks everybody